devote a treatment plant. The development will also be regulated under the terms of an environmental permit, which requires the submission of a detailed odour management plan. Whilst this is a separate mechanism to the planning process and remix, nevertheless taken in connection with a number of detailed planning conditions that will be attached to any planning approval, it is considered that the impacts of the development in terms of odours and local air quality have been properly and appropriately addressed. The anaerobic digestion facility provides a sustainable alternative to sending waste to landfill. The site is located in the primary industrial area and the proposals are in keeping with the national planning policy framework subjectives for encouraging sustainable development. The proposals are considered to be consistent with national and local planning policies in terms of the use of the site and the scale and nature of the development. The proposals are recommended for approval there is a qualified petition and objection. Would the lead petitioner like to come forward to speak on this? No. Is there a Lord Council would like to speak on this? Come forward, John, please. If you could just state the name for the minutes, please, John. John Salter, Council of Seagull. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the opportunity to speak against this application before you this evening and also the committee. I shall also express my thanks to all the members who attended the site visit. Can I just, well, before I start, just make a few, uh, just a few areas that uh, Matthew put out before. The buildings that's in front of them, depending on which way you're looking at it, to the right of this uh, new uh, site are being demolished. The application's already gone through. So, immediately, the non Bedner Road will be able to see this. There's, so, you know, there's a slight mistake. Also, you've put down in there that the River Mersey is 200 metres away. Sorry, it's only 100. There's mistakes all over this application. <coughs> um, I have myself, I was on Mersey Waste Disposal Authority uh, for many years. Um, during that time, I visited. Europe and went to France, Germany and Switzerland. I visited many, many, many energy free waste plants in the UK as well. All of them, and I say all of them, emanate smells from a low to a high pungency. In Germany, where they are forefront of energy from waste, the Green Party, who are very active and play a major role in running the country, have backed away from this type of AD unit because of the many accidents and complaints from the local residents about bad orders. I'll go back to the UK now and return there. Terminal and Goose Street applied for an AD unit and was rejected by the planning committee. They also lost on the appeal because of the smells which were emanate from the plant. And this was supported by Eric Pickles, no less from the Department of Community and Local Government, Shropshire. In February 2013, I'm just going through some of the, what's gone on in the, in the past. Um, which sludge from an AD unit ended up in the nearby river and streams. The Environment Agency, sorry, the Environment Agency had to use hydrogen peroxide to disperse the sludge. Can it? Bigger, a bit of buffer, black flagship, flagship. The populace, having had a running battle with the local residents over smells for the past two years, affecting people up to 800 metres away. People say there's no smells from these units. I can tell you they are. Rothwell complains of horrendous smells up to 1.7 kilometres away. The operator's, operator's response, and I quote this is like from them, there will always be a level of odour. Chair, I could go on all evening with examples of the problems with non aromatic smells from AD units. United Molasses, we'll put, put, they have said we will put in place all, all the recommended pr procedures. Let me, remind them, let me remind them of the problems we've had from smells hitting all the residents in the area known as the Tate Triangle in Putin. From the works located on the Dock Road, 
My fellow councillor, Adrian Jones, and Harry, I've had many meetings with them over the many years. It's still going on today. And I spoke to our environmental agency about it. Now, it is well known. When the United Nations used this present site some time ago, they cleaned out the tanks on a Friday evening, Saturday mornings. I, going back to my other job, I used to pass along Bergen Road at around 4 o'clock in the morning to collect newspapers from our distributor. I noticed steam coming up from the grids in Birkenhead Road. After a couple of weeks, I notified North West Water Board. Upon investigation, it was found out that the operators were draining the tanks into the main drains to save time. This is the people that are saying to us now, we're going to put in all these controls. The fines against owners and operators of anaerobic digesters in this country because of explosions and due to negligence is just under one million pound. We have had one death, 13 injuries at AD site in the UK. All the complaints in 2013 were 835 countrywide. We've seen, with a letter of objection from carpenters and solicitors who were not contacted by us, all the applicants, no other emergency services training centre were brought within 50 metres of the site. Now you can see from carpenters who have some 320 personnel, they have threatened and threatened me that they will move out of the area and they've got 350 people working there. I mean, they're saying that in the AD plants, we're going to have a lot of people working there. There's a maximum of eight who will be doing in there. And for me to turn out and lose 320 uh, jobs in the area, which is within a poor area as it is. The, the, the emergency training centre trained thousands of police, fire and ambulance operatives, doctors, nurses and our own school children. Just in July this year, we had 1,048 children go through uh, what we call a safety awareness and that went, that went on for three days. We, we, and we don't want this to stop because they, they've expressed that they make the lives if this goes through because they're worried about the, the problems that may, may arise. And the smells, it, it will come out. We've also got now, just taken on just recently, the Northwest Ambulance who use that area for, the, for uh, to locate the helicopter so we can hit North Wales on a lot quicker pace and also the local police use it. They both do not want this type of unit being built in this area, both on safety and grounds and also smells. We here in Sigma have had enough of the problems with plants in this area and should not have to go through this again. The residential houses are less than 158. 15 metres away from this proposed site. Also, what about the disruption of putting in the gas main from the site to the other site, which is one and a half miles away? They said, oh, it's, it's, it's only going to be a matter of slight disruption, but we're going to have a lot of disruption along there because we're going to have a new bridge put in as well. I think that's what they're forgetting. Um, I'm going to refer back to something what, like, just excuse me. Oh, Mercy Travel to say there was no complaint from Mercy Travel. The letter of complaints is there and it should be in your pack as well. Right, I'll just go. Frequency and causes of accidents on AD plants. I won't go into what they were, but I'll just tell you a quote. India, one explosion, four deaths. Germany, gas incident, four deaths. Philippines, accident. Four deaths. UK gas incident, one death. 11 serious injuries, including serious burns from one explosion and near fatal gas related injuries. 13 other noted injuries, including 11 firemen, mainly from gas related. Just put before closing today, and then I will close now. Um, this is from one of the, someone who's quoted this in a meeting and it says there'll always be a first time the majority of a plant covered by the design review was found to be fit for purpose 
But it's worth noting that, in the opinion of the review team, the existing safety case did not always give sufficient attention to preempting low probability of high quantities of hazards which were not known already and have resulted in an incident. The industry needs to guard against assuming that something which has not been resulted in an incident in a few hundred operating years, which is known for all plants, is necessarily so improbable that it can be disregarded. Chair, I ask you to reject this application this evening. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, John. Um, obviously, there's a lot of um, things raised there by John, and I'd like officers to uh, comment on them. Uh, first of all, that there are inaccuracies, and um, I haven't got a letter of complaint from Mers Child within my path, I don't have other members. Um, and I'd also like to hear from the Environmental Agency as well. So, um, just before we go on, there's a question to the solicitor. As a well, um, secret resident, do I have to declare an interest in this a little bit about a mile away from? No, not as a secret Thank you, Sue, the chair. The uh, council assault said that our reference to the distance to the river was wrong, that it's, it's, it's um, I guess it depends where you measure it. If, if you measure it in that direction, it is more than 200 metres. If you measure it to the uh, where the, um, what the the gates are, uh, but on average it's about 200 metres. So that is a correct uh, a correct measurement as far as as, as far as um, an average from the distance to the river is. In terms of the letter from Mersey Travel, I've got it in front of me, and they don't. Agree. Matthew, uh, I think if you could read that letter out, that would be helpful. Dear Miss Story, that's the case officer. Thank you for your correspondence dated the 13th of April, which relates to the above planning application. Mersey Travel would wish to offer the following comments. Mersey Travel would wish to request that Wirral Council require the developer to ensure that all traffic likely to be generated by the plant can be accommodated within the local highway network without causing congestion that could impede the passage of bus services upon Dock Road, Church Road, Brighton Street or in the wider surrounding area. Mercy Travel would not wish to see approval granted for this application until such time it could meet the above criteria. We've consulted with our colleagues in the highways and I'm sure Keith can comment on that. Secondly, in order to ensure all employment opportunities are open to all members of the community, Mersey Travel would wish to request that Rural Council require the developer to create appropriate access for Mersey Travel Mersey Link dial ride vehicles. I trust that the above comments clarify Mersey Travel's views with regard to this planning application. However, should you require any further information or assistance from ourselves on this matter, please do not hesitate to contact me. Yours sincerely, Julie Phillips. Thank you, Matthew. Keith, could I ask you to come over, please? Yes, thank you for your chair. Um, the, the site has a almost up East Street has almost direct access onto the strategic network and then onto the motorway uh, beyond that. So we're satisfied that there's sufficient capacity in the highway over there to cater for the traffic that's likely to be generated by this proposal. Yeah. And then happy with that. Yeah. Okay. Um, was it sorry, if I take us if you can know. Uh, thank you, Mr. Through you, Chair. Um, the uh, main concerns that we had when we looked at the, uh, the application was, um, as Council sort of stated to uh, Oda, um, particularly with um, residential properties, the emergency services um, training centre, and the, um, some legal offices nearby, uh, and the impact that Oda would actually have uh, on those centres. What we've done, we've looked at the, um, the report that was submitted with the application. Um, that report is based on the modelling, um, and it makes some assumptions um, on the running of the plant that there won't be any what they call uh, fugitive emissions, which means that the, the plant will be run um, sort of properly uh, and greatly and well maintained. Um, the, the report indicates that at the boundary of the premises, um, the, the 
code it detectable it will be in line with any um, environment agency permit which the plant is required to receive. Um, and they talk in terms of European OD units, um, which uh, at the boundary the levels that they are predicting here um, mean that um, what they're saying is it wouldn't be detectable at those at sensitive uh, locations. Um, so on the basis of that report, and the fact that the, um, the plant would require an environment agency permit that would have conditions on the uh, owners um, perceptible at residential properties and, and other businesses. Um, we ask for some additional conditions, um, and on that basis, we have all these objections to the application. Thank you. Can I open this up to uh, thank you, Chair. It's a very full, comprehensive report on what's uh, proposed on the site. We've got quite a few excellent conditions of the real in relation to uh, any fuel or product that's going in there is completely sealed and absolutely uh, not only odors to escape into the atmosphere. We didn't report a lot of the plant itself, the proposed plant itself. The only time I can see any gas coming out of this place is when it closes down, we have a problem. At least they turn on the, uh, the waste burner. And I just wonder if our uh, environmental officer has any comments in relation to that. Then I could see the local residents being up in arms and they all of a sudden see a flavour over the air. Thank you, Chair. Um, my understanding is the, um, the flare will be used um, if it was an emergency or if there was a uh, plant maintenance. The purpose of that would be to safely burn off gas so it's controlled and, uh, and does not build up. Um, and that is the purpose of the flare. Thank you. Can I just ask you a question related to that about if the sign stopped being used for its purpose? If the if the site stopped um, being used for this purpose, um, I really and then maybe you know, Matthew would be able to help us on that, whether there's any conditions that could be added to, to its use. Um, but the operator would have to make, ensure that it's operated so safely and the burning would still apply and so it was decommissioned. Um, so those conditions um, would still uh, apply to protect the you know, residents. As my understanding, until it is decommissioned and the burning is handled. stop being used for this purpose. I'm, I'm just, when you're talking about the flares, I don't think I've got my head around it properly, I don't know if anyone else has, about these flares going off and, and needing to be um, set alight. If the, if the plant stopped being used for the purpose that we're looking at, the planning application, what I'm asking is, um, if there was a decommissioning of it, um, would something else need to happen? And is there a condition? that we could apply to that. Uh, thank you, through you, Chair. The flare would be used um, to burn off any uh, excess gas um, if the generator went offline or they're doing any, any, any maintenance. Um, if, the, if the unit um, ceased operation, then the, mater the material that goes into the, the unit to create the gas would also sort of stop, so there wouldn't be a need saying for the flare to be continuing in, in use you for free you wouldn't have that 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 clarifies I'm not an expert on this I just wanted to make sure there wasn't still some gas laying around there. Matthew um, yeah I think um, I don't think any of us apart from seemingly John are experts on our remit digestion but um, I've got a couple of concerns and I'm not Central are all planning issues, and I'm asking, I think, the real problem with this um, development because uh, I really empathise with the residents and this idea that there's going to be odours as a result. And um, yeah, it must, it must be incredibly hard to live there. But one of the concerns I have, and that, again, I don't think this is necessarily a planning issue, but I want it to be flagged up is the, the lack of staff at the site. The site is going to be run 24 hours 
a day. Um, and yet, in the papers, it suggests that there's, staff, uh, there's only going to be staff members on site uh, between 8 and 6 on days of Friday and then um, Saturday morning, essentially. Um, and I think, you know, even though it will be remotely monitored, we need to think about the implications of that and what, what the results would be. Um, I think that's something, again, that I think that's going to be considered when it moves to the next stage. I don't think that's a necessarily a common issue. I think, as well, the people could have done uh, the consultation a lot better. A lot of the concerns that the residents raised seem to be around the lack of consultation and the fact they weren't told about it. Now, I know there was uh, a seemingly adverts put in the, the Echo and, and the Globe, but it's not hard to miss that. Um, so I think better consultation could have been done. Um, in terms of the smells um, and the odours that are going to come out as a result, I was just wondering if the um, uh, environmental officer could offer any reassurance in terms of what, what can be expected as a result of the, the development, compared to what there is now. Mm -hmm. uh, thank you, and through you, Chair. Um, as, as I said, our recommendations are, are based on the reports that have been uh, given to us, the wrong conditions um, uh, attached to the application um, that's related to home control that we would. Um, Look at. And there are also um, conditions in the um, in the permit. Um, there have been problems in other months um, that have been alluded to that have also had um, good conditions. Um, but uh, if those conditions are worked properly and the site is managed and the model is correct, then uh, then the odour will be uh, controlled. And as you said, there is an environmental plan that needs to be approved as well. Okay, any other yeah. um, As I understand it, the, the level of sort of danger associated with chemical plants have where a lot of my life with chemical plants. This is not a SEMA site. SEMA sites are being the most dangerous, so for any reassurance, then this isn't of that ilk. So hence the distances and everything can, can be can be We do have SEMA sites a lot of your work uh, day. Um, so it's not a scene site, so that, 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 that sort of brings it down, not a level, but I think, I think the issue is that definitely the one of our owners uh, and some associated. We do have some local knowledge and some expertise on this. So we actually trialled anaerobic digestion units at Tingwall Nurseries prior to them becoming a, a, a doctor surgeon through the W University. And we have two units on there. We've never received one complaint, uh, although not greatly uh, populated but think we'll call that uh, people want to know where that was. Um, okay, small units, but we do have we have had experience that in the past. But my down on it is that this is a job creator, eight jobs are not never to be sniffed sniffed at, sorry, no problem. Um, but eight jobs aren't, aren't to be um to one side, but John referred to the impact on some of the other commercial users uses in the unit. That does concern, but that again is something that would be very difficult to control on the plan. Having done chemical plants involving burning of sulfur, um, uh, using of phthalo fats in, in unikema, there, 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 there are always issues. But this is an industrial area. It, it's had a history of, of, of industry. Kendall uh, operated there before the fire and left the site. Yeah. <laughs> and also Volkai was not really without his problems. Um, and I think I think again what, what tends to happen is that a new African comes along and he is but he sort of carries the burden of previous poor developers. Uh, I just I, I really have a, a real dilemma real dilemma about this one. Um, my, my my instinct is to trust science and, and hope that this is a better way of dealing with this waste stream. That is, currently, that, that is currently available. And if we are to move our economy forward, then we must appear or seem to be open to green industries and new industries that are coming. Now, this is, if this is a forerunner for lots of these types of industries, we'd have to keep, keep a careful eye on it. But it's not, it should never be jobs at any cost. And if, if the risks and the potential outweigh the, the benefits, then the planning system should have a way of doing it. But I can't. Think of how this planning committee could say before it's even built, you're going to cause problems, and that, that's a bad idea, isn't it, for, for this committee? You're going to be a problem. 
Well, that's said no, because we are we'll, we'll, to our environmental agency fairness, and we will comply fully with that. And we have to say, well, yeah, okay, you will. And there will be other agencies that, that control it. In the meantime, poor, poor residents think there's another, there's another source of nuisance coming on our doorstep. It really is a, a, a very difficult one for the planning committee to deal with. So um, I don't know if they're going to make any other contribution, but I'll wait to see. Are there any other contributions? No? Thank you, Pat. I just want to emphasize the, the many positive aspects to the application that we are dealing with something that will use waste products, reduce landfill, and create clean sources of gas. So I uh, just, just want to flag that up and make sure that the committee fully understands that aspect of the application. No. Can, can I just um, say again, what I I'm repeating myself, because it is a comprehensive report. There's lots of conditions that we've got there, which I believe are very uh, meaningful and do a great job. There's also the environment agency, there's also a, other government agencies that will actually monitor this process and have to give it certification before it takes place. I'm quite happy to uh, accept this uh, application as it is at the moment because I've got great fear of uh, the national planning infrastructure policy coming through. Because I've got one in my order which should have been dealt with by the local planning authority, but the applicant and his agent decided to go straight to government. We will only have one little comment to make about it. This way, we're able to, to, to put a lot of information and recommendations to make sure that what we have in our area is safe. It's as safe as we possibly can because it's the legislation set down by European governments, national governments, and what we want to ask ourselves. It's taken out of our hands. And, you know, it's the same safe. Are you moving approval? Yes, I'll move approval. Okay, do you have a seconder? Pat? All those in favour subject to the conditions listed. And against. So that's carried. If okay, we move to agenda item five, say so and C Crime School Stanley Eastern, pages forty five to fifty. Through you, Chair. Uh, this application was subject to a number of site visits on Tuesday. The application seeks permission for the conversion of St Mary's Church of England Primary School into four residential units and the erection of two detached dwellings uh, to the rear of the site. The site sits within the primarily residential area, therefore the principal residential development is acceptable. The site is also located within the centre of the village and the conservation area and as such, the proposals will need to be considered in the context of policy CH2, which deals with developments affecting conservation areas, and also policy CH10, which specifically deals with Eastern Village Conservation Area. The Conservation Area appraisal and management plan are also material to these proposals. The school building is a Grade 2 listed building, and therefore the development must also be considered having regard to policy CH1, which deals with development affecting listed buildings. Dealing with the existing school buildings firstly, uh, the existing building comprises of the former St Mary's School and the attached Old Master's House. 
Um, so this is the existing building here, and in terms of the old master's house, that's this element of the screen um, at the bottom of this, this plan. The old, master's plan, uh, the old master's house will be renovated, resulting in one unit, whilst the school building will be converted into three units, so there'll be four in total. The old master's house and then three, uh, three additional units. The design of the conversion scheme has been carefully considered and worked up in consultation with the council's conservation officers, and having regard to the need to preserve and retain as much of the historic fabric of these buildings as possible, the subdivision proposed seeks to achieve minimal alterations to the building's exteriors. Um, in terms of changes to the front of the building facing onto Stanley Road, uh, these are as follows. I'm going to talk to a different plan, um, if I may. So these are the proposed elevations um, relating to uh, the, the school building. This element here is the old master's house, um, and this element here is the remainder of the old school building. This is the front elevation that looks onto Stanley Road, uh, which faces into the eastern, uh, eastern village conservation area. So the main changes there are as follows. The Lancet windows, um, so that's these long shaped windows, will all be extended by about a metre. Um, so if I could just show you, the existing windows are this, are this much. So I'm just circling the existing, and that's in relation to this window, this window, and these two here, um, and they're there to be extended by about a metre. So this bottom element on this window, this window, and these two windows, their extend, their extensions to that window. Um, and the, the sandstone stills will also be dropped in connection with the extension to the windows. The old uh, the windows on the gable of the old master house, the old master's house, so this, this element here, um, they'll be retained as, as existing, so there's no changes to the old master's house. A new sandstone gable and window at first floor to unit three is proposed, together with a new entrance and porch at ground floor. So this is unit three, and in terms of the new elements, it's this gable here, um, and a new porch, uh, with uh, entrance door. So they're, they're the proposed changes that you can see to Unit 3. And then finally, the three conservation style roof lights that are, be to insert, that are to be inserted into the roof plane to allow for natural light to new bedrooms proposed in Units 2 and 3. So these three um, uh, roof lights are also changes to the front elevation. Um, they're conservation style roof, lay, uh, roof lights, so that means they'll be flush with the roof plane. So just in summary then, these, the, the new elements, the three new windows, the gable, the porch, and the extension of these four windows uh, on the front elevation. There are no proposed changes to the east-facing elevation, which forms the old master's house. Um, so that's this, uh, this, el this elevation here, and if I just go back to the old plan, uh, that fronts onto the access in between number 71 and the, uh, and the proposed site. To this plan, so that you can see um, the, the changes to the west facing elevation. So that, um, that's this elevation here. So the only changes on this, this elevation are there are already three uh, roof lights, there'll be an additional three. Um, so the ones with A above them will be the additional ones, um, and the R are the ones that are existing, but they'll be again replaced with conservation style roof lights. Um, the, the only other change is that there will be a, um, a small extension to the side, which is this part here, which is behind, which is behind an, existing, um, an existing facade, which you can see there. So in terms of what you see from Stanley Road, you wouldn't see that extension behind it, um, because that's, that's already in place. And then finally, the rear elevation as well. As members who attended the site visit on, on Tuesday will have seen, there's, there's quite an, an unattractive, unpleasant uh, 1960s, 1970s extension um, to the rear of this building, and that's to be removed. And by removing that, extent, that extension, you open up um, the, the rear of the, uh, the Grade 2 listed building, 
And so what will happen is some of the old windows that have previously been blocked up are going to be reopened. So these windows here are all going to be reopened. Um, and the gable on this end will be reinstated. Um, as I say, the, the, rear, the rear elevation, uh, by and large, will not be seen outside uh, the rear of the site, so it wouldn't have any great impact on the, the conservation area. And there is a gain to be had by the removal of that, that, uh, that unpleasant extension. Um, so so that's, that's what's proposed in terms of the, um, the existing schoolhouse building. Back to the um, to the to, to the site plan. Uh, overall, the proposals ensure that changes necessary to allow the residential conversion have been kept to an absolute minimum. That original features have been reinstated or restored, and that an important historic asset within the village is brought back into use, ensuring its future for the longer term. It's considered that the appearance and setting of the listed building will be preserved and that the conservation area will also be preserved and enhanced by returning this important building um, to a productive use. Each of the units will have a private, will have private amenity space to the rear and off-street parking provision. You can see that here. Turning now to the two new dwellings to the rear of the site, that's these two um, proposals here. These dwellings will be constructed on the former playground and are necessary to fund the works to carry out the conversion of the listed school building. Which is, a, which is an acknowledged and recognised heritage asset. The proposed materials will be in keeping with traditional materials used in the, in the immediate vicinity and the wider conservation area, thereby ensuring the setting of both the listed building and the conservation area is not harmed. Each dwelling would have private immunity space, and you can see gardens here and here, um, and off-street parking provision. Access to the properties would be via um, a means of new access arrangements from Stanley Lane. So Stanley Lane is this, this road here, um, and the access will run um, between number 71, which is this property, and the old master's house. The access will need to be widened to 5 metres, which will necessi necessitate the sandstone boundary wall to be relocated. And there's a sandstone boundary wall that runs along the perimeter of the site here that will have to be pushed back into the site a little bit um, to accommodate the five metres of the access. Um, however, the wall will be rebuilt using the original sandstone, ensuring that its appearance in the street scene is retained. It's concluded that these proposals return a redundant building to use, preserve and enhance the fabric of both the conservation area and the listed building and comply with national and local planning policies. Uh, the proposals are recommended for approval. There's no petition on this application. I think then there's asked the question on the slide about uh, whether trees would have to be removed. Um, and, and I've just looked that up um, uh, ready for tonight. Um, there are eight trees that will have to be removed, the majority of which are all at the back of the site. So in terms of its impact on the conservation area, that would be minimal. Um, there is this one tree here um, adjacent to the old master's house which will also have to be removed but that's quite small and that needs to be removed to necessitate the, uh, the widening of the access. Um, some of the larger trees along this boundary have to be retained. There is a landscaping scheme um, conditioned on the, um, on the agenda papers um, that would require um, additional landscaping if, if, if the scheme is approved. Thank you, Matthew. Is the ward councillor here to speak on this? And can I open this up to council, councillors, please? Uh, I, I would. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, as, as one of the ward councillors, I'd like to thank everybody who attended the site visit. I think it was quite informative to them. It's a, it's a sort of extra bit at the end that Matthew mentioned in uh, relation to the, the tree, lots of left hand corner that's going to have to be removed. Did forget to say that the, the boundary wall to the school has got to be removed as well. And uh, taking that this is the epicenter of the conservation area, the effects it will have uh, to the conservation of the village itself. Uh, given that we've already altered it in relation to uh, Jasmine Cottage, just upstanding lane, uh, number 91 on the other side, the map that you've got in your book, which was allowed at one time. Uh, last year, which I attended, 
and spoke against as board councillor. I believe that uh, the changes that are proposed to the front of the school building, we might as well rip up the conservation plan for Eastern Village because we're just not taking any notice of what it says. Conservation is that conservation, it's a listed building and part of that process is that no frontage should be materially changed. And what you've seen in the presentation before you is a complete change to the whole front of the school. It's completely um, against everything that's written in the development plan. You can see that. Um, Matthew mentioned the, uh, the, the building which will be on the development to the right. You, you won't see it from the road. You can see there at the moment, at the end of the school, there's a, a doorway, and then there's Jasmine Cottage. Jasmine Cottage was actually refused an application to the rear by the authority a few years ago because it was detrimental to the conservation of the village centre. And yet here we are asking for a complete uh, rerun, reface of uh, the original village school. I I'm totally against that. I I've got uh, a reasoned argument uh, and a recommendation for refusal. I'd like to hear from this one and I'm first before I move. Matthew, can I just ask you to comment on some of Professor Mitchell's comments there regarding um, the footage changes? Thank you, through you, Chair. I mean, uh, any changes to the listed building um, should be um, counted to an absolute minimum. Um, what we've had to accept, and as I said in the presentation, these proposals have been worked up closely with our conservation officers. Um, the building has been empty for some time. It is in danger of becoming more and more derelict if it's left um, to be um, to be empty. And these proposals um, introduce an opportunity to bring this building back into a productive use. Um, we, we, we have tried and we work very closely with the, uh, the applicants' agents um, to keep those changes to, uh, to a bare minimum. And, 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 I, and I outlined in, in the presentation what those, what those changes are. Um, we don't feel that the changes that are put forward with this application um, uh, materially alter the fabric of the, of the front elevation of the building. We, we still feel that, the, that what you see on site, um, and you'll still get that feeling with the conversion of, of this building. Um, so unfortunately, I, I have to disagree with, with Councillor Mitchell. Like that. We, we've kept the changes to an absolute minimum, um, and I, I don't really want to go through them all again, but I will if, if councillors um, um, require me to do so. Um, but, but, but you can see the drawing in front of you. We, we have worked very hard to keep them to an absolute minimum. I think it was more the, uh, the comments regarding tearing up the plan for the con conservation area that, that uh, I was more okay. interested in. Well, we have had regard to the conservation area appraisal and the management plan and that document does identify this building as one of the key buildings in the Eastern Village conservation area and the historic core of the village. Um, it, it does say that um, substantial changes to listed buildings and buildings in the conservation area should take place to the rear of, the, of, of, of buildings and not, not the frontages that, that look onto the um, the fabric, the core of the conservation area, and I, and I just go back to say that the majority of those changes to this building are taking place to um, to the rear of the building, and again, the changes that are taking front, taking place at the front of the building are, are limited. Thank you, for Matthew. Yeah, um, obviously, have real sympathy with the conservation area and, and what they're trying to do in, in terms of preserving. Uh, Eastern Village. Um, didn't go on the site visit myself on, on Tuesday, but I do know the site, so um, I actually think that the designs for the front of the building are quite tasteful. I think what it does is preserves a building that, you know, in 10, 15 years' time, were these not